and welcome to the Shipper Update. I'm Anthony Smith, Chief Economist here at FreightWaves, and I'm here with Tony Mulvey. Tony, this is the Shipper Update, and this week we got a lot of data points around inflationary pressures. We got data around retail sales. We got data around even this morning industrial production. So let's just jump into it, starting it off with the CPI, the Consumer Purchase Index. Um, so when we're looking at this, it's essentially showing the inflationary pressures for those consumers. I mean, we're looking at so much upward pressure right now. It's just building and building and building. And right now, we look at this upward movement here, we see in the blue line the CPI, but in the orange line here, we have a, a regression line built back to 2018, just to kind of show where that average has kind of been above and below. And right now, we are well above what would be typically seen throughout this time frame. So when we're looking at this, Tony, I mean, what are some of your initial thoughts here? Well, my big one is that puts pressure on the consumer, right? Yeah. Consumers have less buying power. When you're, you're talking, what was it, 8.5% on a year-over-year -year basis? I mean, every, if it, everything's more expensive, 8.5%. Real wages, or wages were up, what were they, 5 6%? Tells me real wages are down. So consumer buying power is, is negative. And the impacts of that, I mean, when you think about what we've had in the last two years where we've kind of had the government act as almost like a safeguard against the consumer. I mean, you had stimulus packages, tax credits, things like that. All of those have expired now into 2022, and what we're seeing is inflation numbers are intensifying. I mean, it was what, 1.2% month over month increase? And that's the highest it's been in the last 12 months. I mean, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's my key takeaway. It's like inflationary pressures, obviously, we saw gas prices had a massive impact on this. And what we see is a lot of people talk about core inflation, removing those energy and food prices. But I mean, those are some of the most important aspects in the CPI. Yeah. Why, why are, and, and to the consumer, I mean, we're talking about necessities, right? Food and energy are two of those necessities, shelter the other one. Why, 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 is it, why do they get removed? Why are they talked about? Is it just because the headline number might be a little better than when you include everything? I mean, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. When you're looking at that core number, it takes away from the true bite that's really being felt right now. And I mean, we're looking at the upward movement in the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, and you start to kind of think like, all right, where is this gonna end? Where are we gonna stop seeing some upward movement? One of the things that we're gonna look at in the next chart here is gonna be where it's all coming from. It's gonna be coming from the PPI, the producer price index. And so in our next chart, we'll see that the producers are paying more, and when the producers are paying more, in turn, we have to pay more as well. So we're seeing this upward movement all right, as well for the producer price index, seeing that there is ongoing increase here. And really, that tells us that this upstream increase in inflationary pressures are going to make its way downstream. Now, some parts of this are not going to be the same. I mean, we're looking at oil um, or gas, I should say that gets passed along immediately. There's no concern about, oh, we gotta preserve you know, our market share, we gotta you know, pass it on right away. But we look at some of the other areas, sometimes it's a little bit slow, depending on what kind of condition some of these consumers are. They wanna maintain as much market share as possible, so they'll be a little bit slower to pass on those increases. But when we're seeing this upward movement, this is gonna be one of those areas that if they keep taking on more of the price increases, which they've been passing them through for sure, but if they take on more, that's gonna eat into their margins, and then that's gonna in turn, it's, it's big loophole of, hey, now, or I should say vicious loop of now they can't hire as many folks, and the jobs market's definitely been one of those areas where it's the last stronghold for a lot of consumers right now. Yeah, it really has been. I mean, you look at the labor market and how tight it is. I mean, you, the optionality of a consumer that they have to go change jobs was, at all-time highs. I mean, you talk about job openings uh, at record lows, or record highs, sorry, yeah. in unemployment at record lows. I mean, there's that optionality. This is interesting because, I mean, you think about what this includes, right? It does include energy costs, it includes those raw materials, it includes transportation costs, all of that. So, I mean, we were, I was talking last week about what this means for the consumer, where we're seeing rates on the transportation side fall off a cliff, well, it doesn't necessarily mean the inflationary pressures are gonna go away, right? right? Those prices, while some transportation costs got passed off in, into the consumer, 
even a downward movement doesn't mean that the PPI is going to go down. And that's, and that's what we're seeing. I mean, we talked about it. March was not a great month in terms of where we saw rates go. Mm -hmm. And we still saw upward pressure on the PPI. Yeah, and sneak peek to our next year update real quick on our next chart here. We're going to get into it. Retail sales. I mean, this has been one that I think, Tony, the headline number doesn't really do justice to the underlying trends. We saw an upward movement here, but really, when you peel that number back, there were a little bit of stories to tell there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you start looking at those non-adjusted numbers and then adjust them for inflation, it's, it's not the greatest sight in the world to see, that's for sure. Exactly. So we're going to jump into that a little bit more later on, but right now we're going to toss it to a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Freight Waves Now. 